In this tutorial, I'll talk about uplift modeling. However, to make sure that you can relate to the terms comfortably, I'm going to talk about what is a campaign and how do you measure the effectiveness of a campaign? How do you know that the campaign has worked? During this process, I will talk about treatment versus control or test versus control strategy. After that, I'll talk about optimization of a campaign. How do you design an optimal campaign, which is all about uplift modeling? Please make a note. I'm not going to talk about mathematical detail of how to actually do uplift modeling. I'm just going to introduce you to the concept of uplift modeling. So let's first understand what is a campaign. A campaign has four characteristics. First of all, it is a time bound offer. Second, it is for a specific set of target group. Third, for a specific behavior. It is very clear that what behavior you need to exhibit. And if you exhibit that behavior, there is a clear cut reward for the same. Let me introduce you to the, all these things through an example. It is a hypothetical example. Let's say a Starbucks coffee outlet runs a special promo for students of a nearby educational institute. So Starbucks is running an offer for a nearby educational institute. So it's a very specific set of target group that nearby educational institute, students of nearby educational institute. And it runs an offer for period 1st March 2019 to 15th March 2019. So if you look at it is for a very specific set of period. So if you are acting, if you are doing something in this period, it will be considered as the part of offer. Otherwise, it will not be considered. And what is that? So if you look at the first thing, it is for a specific set of target group. And second, it is a time bound offer. What is the specific behavior that it wants? It wants you to make four or more purchase on Starbucks, each more than 100 rupees. So you should have four purchases. It should cross 100, 101, 100, but 100 or more, you should make four transactions. So that's the specific behavior. And what is the specific reward if you do something like that? You will earn a voucher for two free coffee. So there is a voucher which will enable you to have two free coffee so that's a that's an example of a campaign which is all the which has all four characteristics now how will you measure the effectiveness of a campaign that is how will you know that the campaign worked or not to know that you have to keep in mind that there will be some set of people who would have anyway purchased four times of value more than 100 right and there be can be some people who can argue you that this is the only joint nearby so people will keep coming so what is the need of a campaign and that's a very valid question on top of that you can have some impact of like seasonality people can say that it might be winter and in winter people will take coffee more than probably cold drinks and it is also on top of that examination time where people are trying to remain awake, study a little more with the coffee. So in this situation, how will you know the impact of campaign? All these things you can do by taste versus control strategy. Taste is also called treated and control is called hold out. Let me explain you the same thing, this concept by an example. So what you do among the set of people, you take say roughly 50% of them and give them the offer. The base which gets the offer, this base which gets the offer is called test group or treated group. The second set of the students who do not get the offer this base is called control group or hold out group because they didn't get the offer. Now, what you need to understand that winter, exam, everything is same for both the groups. So, whatever is the incremental difference in 
between these two, you can attribute that to the offer or you can say this is the impact of an offer. So because seasonality and uh, all other factors are same for both the groups, you can comfortably say that whatever is differential behavior is because of the offer. Let's see it side by side because that's where you learn it better. So let's take an example. Let's say the treated group had 600 students and control group had 500 students. It's roughly 50-50 though not exactly 50-50. And let's say among these 600 people there are 120 people who made four or more purchase of 100 rupees between 1st to 15th March and in this group 75 people did that same. So look at the response rate which is 120 divided by 600 is 20 percent here and here for the control group it's 75 by 500 is 15 percent. So you can say the impact is 5 percent. So 5 percent of the people started spending four transactions started making four transactions in that 15 days period to get that offer. There can be another angle as well like what is the purchase made by these 120 folks these are 48,000 for example and here 75 people had made purchase of let's say 22,500. So if you look at spend by responder or spend per responder so this will come out to be 400 in case of test group and 225 by 100 300 for the control group. So you can say that here also not only people started 5% people started spending more in fact all 20% of the people spent 100 rupees more than the control group. So that's another impact. Now let me explain you how do you optimize a campaign. For that I am going to introduce you to uplift modeling. So understand this way that there are some responder and some who did not respond in test group. So in test group you had test group say offered 600 and you had control group 500. In test group you have people who responded 120 and there are some 480 who didn't respond. That way there are some people who responded in control also. What is the meaning of responded here? It is not that there was an offer and they responded. It is that just they exhibited the natural tendency. There are 75 people who spent 100 more than 4 times, 4 or more times in that 1 to 15th March period. So they exhibited the pattern similar to what was the criteria of the responder even though there was no offer here and then 425 didn't show any response. Now let's look at side by side. So among test you have 4, 600, 120 responder, 480 non responder, control, 75 responder, non, 425 non responder. You will actually need to find 4 kind of profile. What are those 4 kind of profile? First is deadbeat. What is deadbeat? Deadbeat is someone who didn't respond either with the offer even when he was given offer or when he was not given an offer. So it's the profile of people who won't respond no matter what you do. You give offer or you do not give offer. Then there is a second set of people who are the sure sort. What is sure sort? Sure sort is someone who will respond either you give offer or not. So these are the set of folks who would have anyway taken four or more times purchase made four or more times purchase of 100 rupees in between 1st to 15th either you had given offer or not. If you look at graphically this appears like these are the kind of people who would have responded anyway. So what you need to understand neither I am showing you all of them here it's just showing a fraction neither I am showing all fractions part here. It is also covering the fractional part only. And you will understand when I am going to talk about third and fourth that why I have shown it partially only. So let's understand the third portion. Third portion is the offer seeker who responds only when he sees money. So these are the guys who will respond only with an offer. 
So these are that set of people who are responding only when the offer was given. What you need to understand in the last, I explained you that these are the set of people who will respond anyway, either there is an offer or not. And this is the remaining set of population who will respond only when the offer is given. There is fourth set of people also. This is the fourth set which is called sleeping dogs. Sleeping dogs like if you just leave them, they are sleeping. But the moment you try to awake them, they will start barking and they will show a different behavior. So this is the group who will respond without an offer. But if you give an offer, they will withdraw. They will not take the offer. You find it counterintuitive, correct? But actually it happens. I'll give you an example. Uh, in India, like uh, uh, for the channel, you know, channel new channels start coming and people have to select new channels. So there are some set of people who are taking the mega channel, mega pack, which was like covering all the channels. And now you don't have anything like that. You have to select channels. And then the person start realizing that they are not watching TV only. And there are many people who didn't renew it only. So these are the set of people. The moment you explain or start asking question that what do you want to see? They realize that they are not using it. They were just paying money and they will not do at all. They will probably not renew it. Otherwise, there are some set of people who would have set it for the auto renewal and probably the money would have gone from his credit card. This kind of people also happens. If you look at these are this, this set of people. These are the part of responder of the control group. So where the, you had not given an offer. But if you look at these are in test group, these are here. So when you gave an offer, they didn't respond. When you didn't give an offer, they responded because here they are natural without they were unaware. They just left, left it. But the moment you try to explain, you try to say that you can go for an upper variant of the card. They realize that that, you know, probably they are not using it upper variant of any new product. They said they, they felt that they are not using it and it's better that they just close it. So that's that's something like, you know, that the moment you touch it, it's a negative impact. Now let's look at all of them side by side. Let's revisit that. So you have deadbeat who will not respond. Either you give offer or not offer. Then sure sort who will respond in both the situation. Either you give offer or do not give offer. Then you have offer seekers who will respond when you give an offer, but otherwise they will not respond. And sleeping dogs who will not respond if you give an offer, but otherwise they will respond. Now, if I ask you that whom you think offers should be given, what will be your answer? Obviously, if you think of there is no point giving here because they will not respond. No point giving here because they will respond anyway. And obviously no point giving any offer here because that will work negatively. So the only candidate for the offer is that offer seeker. So this is the only group whom you should target. I hope I clarified your points. I have, I hope it became clear to you absolutely that what is uplift modeling. If you like the video, just hit the like button. Also subscribe to my channel so that when I upload new videos, you get to know. Thank you so much.